Shabbat Shalom Hebrews and Shalom homies. We have a friend. Hi everyone. <laughs> you didn't know I was gonna do that. Oh, we also have a plant. My wife likes plants. And I like Scott, so you know, it just it just works. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> um and we are in uh numbers three this morning. No, this does not have to be like this. It could be more like this. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I said I could do this, so there we go. I don't. It doesn't. It don't matter. All right. So we're in numbers three. The the gentleman who commented last week about how I should not pronounce Hebrew names like that, you are not gonna like this video, because. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of names and very little Hebrew in this mouth, <laughs> so fair warning. But with all due respect, I do my best to uh, honor the words of the Father, and so I will try, okay? Uh, so long and short, here we are at Numbers 3. Please crack open your Bible and read along with us. I don't ever want you to take uh, my word for this, I want you to just see it with your own eyeballs, and I want you every time before you, not that what I want matters, but I would love it if you would, before you crack open your Bible, ask the Father to speak to you with his word, and he will. Uh, even in uh, what I would say, Numbers 3 is not precisely a super inspiring <laughs> chapter, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. All right, so Numbers 3. And these are the generations of Aaron and Moshe, when Yahweh spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests, whom he ordained as priests. And Nadab and Abihu had died before Yahweh when they brought strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. Now, you remember back in Exodus, the Father consumes them with fire because I believe they were drunk. And then uh, they brought the wrong incense for the service unto Yahweh. Because immediately after that, we have the basically the instruction that you will not be drunk in service to Yahweh. You won't do it. And if you do, he will consume you by fire, which... What's that phrase? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right. Wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah, thank you. It is the beginning of wisdom. And, uh, yeah. Don't get drunk and think that you're going to serve the Father. It doesn't work that way. He will smote you. He's done it before. Okay. And they had no children. So Eliezer and Ithamar acted as priests in the presence of Aaron, their father. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and set them before Aaron the priest, and they shall serve him, and shall guard his duty and the duty of all the congregation before the tent of appointment to do the service of the dwelling place. And they shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of appointment and the duty of the children of Israel to do the service of the dwelling place. So, foot stomp, twice in a row. What are they going to do? They're going to guard all the furnishings of the tent of appointment and the duty of the children of Israel to do the service of the dwelling place. That's what they're doing. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. That's again, twice. And they, are given one, and they are the given ones, given to him from among the children of Israel. So the father is knife handing here. He's telling, make sure that you understand this is what the Levites are going to do. And you are to give them to Aaron, to work for Aaron. They now are not property of, but they are indentured to Aaron. They are in this service. And appoint Aaron and his sons, this is ten, and they shall guard their priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, you know what, just to illustrate, again, I showed this last week, but this particular, see that, see that right there? Yeah. Yeah, see that? So, you see how the Levites... See, Gershon, Levi, 
um, Morari Levi. So the tents of the Levites were set up around the tent of appointment, and then the 12 tribes were set up around there. Oh, okay. And so these guys were perimeter security for... I got you. Right? And so, again, I showed this last week, but if you look how the tents of the Levites are around the tent of appointment, the dwelling place, okay, the tabernacle, they were perimeter security. They were in between the other tribes and the tent of appointment. Now, it's interesting. Of course, there's nothing that's interesting. It's, there's no coincidence. But <clears throat> right here, and appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall guard their priesthood. They shall guard their priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. Numbers 15, which we're not there yet, the rebellion of Korah, Korah decides, hey, you know what, you Levites, you're not the guys. Me and my buddies, we're the guys. And they, they're they taking military action. They show up at the door of the tent of appointment, Korah and, um, oh, I can't remember the two other guys. We'll get there in a couple of weeks. And they're ready to throw down. And the father laughs and swallows their tents up whole with all their families in it from the ground and rains fire down. And I think 15,000 people are killed. And then there's the reiteration that the Levites are my people. Right. And nobody just shows up here at the tent of appointment. The other thing is, I think it speaks to the intent of the heart. When you show up at the tent of appointment and you have an offering for Yahweh, you're here. You don't show up empty-handed, and you certainly don't show up with malice in your heart. Right. Right? Right. I think I think that is illustrative for us as well. Um, and so, okay, 11. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Now look, I myself have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. So we're going to read a little bit, and then we're going to do some flipping. Because there's a statement here that could be considered contradictory if you don't understand what it is that you're reading. <clears throat> because all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, I set apart to myself all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. They are mine. I am Yahweh. Not, they're mine. I am Todd. They are mine. I am Yahweh. Remember the guy who created you and then brought you out of bondage. And Yahweh spoke with Moshe, saying in the wilderness of Sinai, Register the children of Levi by their fathers' houses, by their clans. Register every male from a new moon old and above. So Moshe registered them according to the word of Yahweh had been commanded, as he had been commanded. And these were the sons of Levi, their names yada yada yada. So before we come to all of this, we can go back to Numbers 3.11, Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, Now look, I myself have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the wound among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. So we have an either or here, okay? So if we flip over to Exodus 13.13, 13, I have a note in my Bible next to Numbers 312 that says Exodus 13 13 and we see in 13 13 but every firstborn of a donkey you are to ransom with a lamb and if you do not ransom it then you shall break its neck and every firstborn of a man among your sons you are to ransom and we can also look at Exodus 22 29 Shemot that's Hebrew for Exodus apparently Shemot you have an impressive Hebrew. I'm, yeah, I know how to read yeah. these English-sized Hebrew words up here in the corner of the book. It's impressive. Thank you. I do the things. <laughs> Twenty-two, twenty-nine. Do not delay giving your harvest and your vintage. Give me the firstborn of your sons. So, and there's several other places that this is found that the firstborn belongs to Yahweh. That is a little tiny print. It is. You got it? Um, is it working? Yeah, I'm, I'm playing trombone again. Okay. I could get you a different <laughs> no, one. Oh, you're good. You're okay. Good. Sorry about that, buddy. No, no, no. You're good. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, we understand here, biblically speaking, that the firstborn 
is to be given to Yahweh. But now here in Numbers 3, Yahweh says, here's the deal. Instead of this firstborn, you're going to give me the Levites. So then he says to Moses, register the children of Levi by their father's houses, by their clans. Register every male from a new moon old and above. So every, every single male from a month old and above, how many are there? Is what Yahweh is asking Moses. Not that Yah needs to know the answer. Yah already knows the answer. Right. But because the people need to know the answer, which we will see. Okay. So 316. So Moshe registered, registered them according to the word of Yahweh as he had been commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names. Gershon and Kahath and Morari. And these were the names of the sons of Gershon by their clans, Libni and Shimi. And the sons of Kahath by their clans, Amram and Itzar and Hebron and Uzael. And the sons of Merari by their clans, Mali and Mushi. Mushi, that's a good one. These are the clans of the Levites by their father's houses. And Gershon came from the clan of the Libnites, and the clan of the Shimites, and the clan of the Gershonites. And the registered ones, according to the number of all the males from a new moon old and above, their registered ones were 7,500. The clans of the Gershonites were to camp westward behind the dwelling place. And the leader of the father's house of the Gershonites, Elisaph, son of Lael, and the duty of the children of Gershon and the tents of appointment was the dwelling place and the tent with its covering and the covering of the door of the tent of appointment and the screens of the courtyard and the covering of the door of the courtyard which is around the dwelling place and the slaughter place and their cords according to all its service. So we're, there's a couple of different threads that are being woven together here. The first is that we're numbering the sons of the tribe of Levi so that we know how many people we're dealing with. The second is, while that's taking place, we're having work assignments given. You will do this. You will do that. You are responsible for this. <clears throat> okay. And uh, 27. And Kahath came, and from Kahath came the clan of the Am Amramites, and the clan of the Yitzarites, and the clan of the Hebronites, and the clan of the Uzielites, these were the clans of the Kahanite, Kahanites. And so basically, if you want to start a tribe or a clan, you just take your name and put it after it, and then you're good to go. Like Mennonite, right. uh, you know, like it's Baronites, those are good. Or the Barites. Should we be right. Barites? We should be Barites. Barites? Okay. All right. Thanks. It's a thing. Done. Handled. Water. Mm. Hydrate. All right. We were attacked by a jar last night. I know nothing. Viciously attacked by a jar last night. <laughs> <laughs> Drive-by jarring. It was brutal. It's like, oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> In number, all the males from a new moon old and above were 8,600 guarding the duty of the set-apart place. The clans of the children of Kahath were to camp on the south side of the dwelling place. And the leader of the father's house of the clans of the Kahites was the Elitsevhan, son of Uzael. And their duty was the ark, and the table, and the lampstand, and the slaughter place, and the utensils of the set apart place to be in service, to be used in service, and the covering, and all its service. And Eleazar, Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest was to be chief over the leaders of the Levites with oversight of those who guard the duty from the set-apart place. From Morari came the clan of the Malites and the clan of the Mushites, and these were the clans of Morari. And the number of the registered ones from all their males from a new moon old and above were 6,200. And the leaders of the father's house of the clans of Morari was Saruriel, Suriel, son of Abihail. That's a good one. Abi Hail. These were to camp to the north side of the dwelling place. And the appointed duty of the children of Merari was the boards of the dwelling place, which are made of acacia wood and are ten cubits long, and they're what, two cubits or one cubit wide, and I remember this, and they've got sockets in them, and those sockets receive silver, and I read all of that in the busted down 
uh, ante room to the sanctuary yeah. of the church Panama in Panama City, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that that part of Exodus gets a little repetitive. And then the blah, 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 acacia wood. Blah, 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 gold. Blah, 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 silver sockets. <clears throat> okay. And the appointed duty of the children of Merari, the boards of the dwelling place, its bars and its columns and its sockets and its utensils and all its service, and the columns of the courtyard all around with their sockets and their pegs and their cords, and those who were to camp before the dwelling place, and those who were to camp before the dwelling place on the east before the tent of appointment, were Moshe and Aaron and his sons, guarding the duty of the set-apart place and the duty of the children of Israel. But the stranger who came near was to be put to death. All the registered ones of the Levites, whom Moshe and Aaron registered at the mouth of Yahweh by their clans, all the males from the new moon old and above, were 22,000. Okay, stop there for a moment. So from 339, well actually here, from 3, where is it? 15 to 339. We have the registering of the children of Levi by their father's houses, by their clans, right. as told to Moshe by Yahweh. So that just happened. How many are there? There are 22,000. Okay. <clears throat> Remember that. There are 22,000 Levites. Now, Yahweh said to Moshe, this is 40, register all the firstborn males of the children of Israel from a new moon old and above, and take the number of their names. What's going on here? So we have the Levites over here, and now Moshe is saying, register all the firstborn of the tribes of Israel over here. These are the firstborn that have been born since the Exodus, mm -hmm. since Pesach, and then they scoot out, and they basically bug out of Mitzrayim, they bug out of Egypt, and they end up in the wilderness of Sinai, where they are right now in this portion of the story. How many new babies who are a year old, firstborn, do we have since that happened? Because over here, <clears throat> in 312, we have this discussion about, give me your firstborn. That hasn't happened yet. That's really important to understand. Okay, so there's a bunch of firstborn who have not been given to Yahweh yet. Okay? So, back over here, uh, 341. And you shall take the Levites for me. I am Yahweh. Instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the livestock of the Levites, instead of all the firstborn among the livestock of the children of Israel. And Moshe registered all the firstborn among the children of Israel, as Yahweh had commanded him, and all the firstborn males by the number of names from the new moon old and above of their registered ones were 22,273. So we got 22,000 Levites, 22,273 newborns, firstborn males. Right. So a difference of 273. Okay. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites instead of livestock. I and the Levites shall be mine. I am Yahweh. And for the ransom of the 273 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, who are more than the numbers of the Levites, for these 273 extra kids, they will be ransomed. You shall take five shekels for each one, head by head. Take it by the shekel of the set-apart place, the shekel of twenty geras. It's a small silver coin. And you shall give the silver, the ransom of those who are in excess among them, to Aaron and his sons. And Moshe took the ransom silver from those who were over and above those who were ransomed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the children of Israel, he took the silver, 1,365 pieces, according to the shekel of the set-apart place. And Moshe gave their ransom silver to Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded Moshe. That's the end of Numbers 3. Why is that important? It's important for a few reasons. First and foremost, Scripture does not contradict itself. Right. So you have to, if there's a portion of it that you don't understand or doesn't make sense... You need to study, well, how come Yah said, give me your firstborn, 
but now he's going to take the Levites. A, because he can, and he reminds us repeatedly, I am Yahweh, right? It's not like I'm Tim and this is a good idea. No, I'm Yahweh. He's like, we're doing this. That's A. B, we have the establishment of the Levitical priesthood repeatedly throughout the previous chapter and this chapter. So it's been established and now it's being provisioned. These are the people who work it. These are your jobs. Here's some uh, silver to get you started, right? And so we, we have all this going on. You have manpower. You got a little bit of money to work with. You have your flocks rather than taken from the, the firstborn of every animal of the tribe of Israel. This is also a streamlining of the process. Right. And then now if you go to the other tribes, the 12 tribes aside from the Levites, these guys over here, Reuben, Simon, Gad, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Ephraim, uh, Manasseh, Benjamin, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali, 603,550 military aged males, nothing to shake a stick at. Um, other than the fact that they didn't really know how to fight yet at this point, they were good at making bricks. <coughs> but a bricklayer with a sharp stick can kill you. So, I'm sure. Um, but these 12 tribes, now, if I'm one of the men in this tribe, I need my firstborn son. I need somebody to go water the sheep. I need somebody to watch the house while I'm gone on business. I need somebody to teach the family business. I need, I need my firstborn son. So up until now, my firstborn son would have gone to the temple, the tent of appointment, to be in service to Yahweh. That's no longer the arrangement. The process has been streamlined. Now the father has the Levites. He has taken the Levites. He's provisioned the Levites. And so that process works well for the father. It works well for the Levites. And none of the 12 tribes can grumble against the Levites because their children have been ransomed. They get to retain their firstborn animals, their firstborn children, firstborn son, um, for their service, not for the service to Yahweh, and the priesthood has been provisioned. That's what's going on here in Numbers 3. So there's an opportunity for people to get tripped up with that, but you don't need to. It's A, if you've just managed to read through all of it, including the names, it kind of explains itself. Although I had to go back and read it, I think three times to get the gist of what was going on there. Um, and then B, research it. If there's something you don't quite understand, research it. <clears throat> Typically I would do two of these, um, a week, but, um, we got a place to go this morning. And so we're not, that's going to do it for, uh, the Old Testament reading this week. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you guys are awesome. I got nothing else to add. You got anything to add? Shalom. Shalom, my Hebrews, and shalom, my homies. <laughs> we, have, You know what? We have a lot of new people at the channel, so if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me explain a couple of things. I am not your typical Christian. I think that's a good thing. Uh, I get the question all the time, what Bible do I read? This is the scriptures. You can go to the search bar in YouTube and just put in Bear Independent Bible and there's a video on this book and why I use this book. I have had people ask me uh, just in the last couple of days, brand new at the channel, why do you say Yeshua? How come you don't say Jesus? You can say anything you want. Uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. It's not just a cool song. I have cast out demons with that name. I have also done a lot of scriptural research in the time in between then and now and Jesus was a romanization of the name Yeshua which was Hebrew like Joshua and it means Yah saves it means salvation so literally Messiah's name in Hebrew which they would have called him in Hebrew regardless of what language the New Testament was written in, in Judea, they were still speaking Hebrew at the time of Yeshua of Nazareth. Um, his name literally means salvation. That's what they called him. And so 
I think that it's very much so for me, it's like, if I always called you Tim, thanks Tim, you know, good job Tim. And one day you pulled me aside and you said, hey T, listen, Tim works, but I really prefer to be called Timothy. Okay. Well, after we have that conversation, I'm always going to remember that when I go to call you Tim, that you prefer to be called Timothy. And so I'm not saying that Yeshua prefers to be called Yeshua. I'm saying that the Father has written that on my heart and I say the name Yeshua. But understand that I'm talking about Jesus the Christ, the anointed of Yahweh, the creator of heavens and earth. I'm talking about Messiah when I say the name Yeshua. And so you do whatever works for you. I don't, I have zero interest in writing the convictions of my heart on yours and then knife handing you and telling you to do them. All I can do is do my best to put a smile on the Father's face the way that he has instructed and convicted me to do it. And all I ask of anybody else who claims to be a believer is that they do believe in the Son as Messiah and that they do do the convictions of their heart as written there by the Father. Everything else from there, we can argue about over beers with Moses in heaven. So that's, that's where I'm at on that. So with that... Shalom and blessings, y'all.